listening to episode 297 of My to Life Radio. I'm Matt Blackburn, and this is a solo q and I'm taking listener questions from Instagram. I always say this, but I'm going to do my best to be not as long-winded and just do more of a rapid-fire style answer. First question, any recommendations for bed and mattress? So I've bought several beds from a company called CBH Wood Furniture. Their website is SwissDreamBeds.com. They're made by a German carpenter, and it's a Swiss design, and it's very clean. There's no springs. There's no metal. It's just wood and really pure materials. I actually interviewed the founder, Hendrik, episode 171. You can find that on YouTube. The episode is What Makes a Healthy Bed. And the materials are amazing. It's Talalay latex with 100% untreated virgin sheep wool and then untreated Canadian wood. So you don't have to worry about any off-gassing. Everything is very pure. And the cool thing about their design is there's wooden slats. And that system replaces a traditional box spring setup. And on their website, they talk about how it could potentially help to relieve low back pain and also help to prevent it. It's an interesting design where if you get a size bigger than a twin, like a queen or a king, there's going to be two slat systems. So versus a traditional foam mattress in the center, you can sleep in the center. And I asked Hendrik this in the show that we recorded, but ideally you sleep in the middle of each of the slat systems, each of the two systems on the bed. So it takes some getting used to there. If you're used to sleeping in the middle of the bed or you move around a lot, I currently have a king bed and I just sleep on one side of it. Every week, I see these ads for these biohacked mattresses where it tracks your sleep and it's connected to an app. I'm not going to name the particular company, but it's a number. And then the word sleep is the company name. I've never tried it, but it seems like a lot of these influencers, they have hundreds of thousands of subscribers on YouTube or whatever platform. And there's a commission that they make. There's also these cooling beds that I've played around with and had actually a bad experience with the last few years with a brand new unit leaking from one of the big cooling companies out there. So I was really disappointed in that. And I just keep going back to basics. I mean, I have a lot of experience with the Magnetico sleep pad and I had a really good interview with Dean Bonley you can find on YouTube about sleeping on a really unique magnetic grid. And you can use that with the Swiss Dream Beds. But if you're in the right climate, I'm in the forest. That's my element. I've been without AC for years, which changes the game. But most of the time, I keep a window cracked around the bedroom so that I get fresh air, oxygen, cool air coming in, and I never have a problem with overheating. I'm from San Diego, 30 years down there, and part of why I can't stand that area is just the infrared radiation is intense. And I feel it even if I'm in an air-conditioned Airbnb or hotel or whatever, it's just very draining for me to have that constant heat. And I'd imagine that's partially genetic, being 99% European. I naturally gravitate to a more northern latitude where you experience four seasons and it's colder. But my point is I always go back to basics. So my current sleep setup is very simple. It's just a king Swiss dream bed with the Mitolife grounding sheet. I use the loose one, not the fitted rod to earth. And that was on day one of moving into this property three to four years ago. I put it down the second story and pounded the rod that comes with a silver sheet into the soil. And that's always my first priority. It's easily my top five things that I do when I move into a new home. 
And that's my whole setup. I have a air filter running, the Air Oasis 2.0. I turn the UV light off when I go to bed. So it's just the fan on one speed. And then during the winter, I'll run the Air Oasis humidifier. And by the way, going back to the affiliate thing, I'm an affiliate for neither of those products. So I make nothing by recommending them to you. I gain nothing. And that's really what you want to look for on podcasts and people recommending products. Now, it's not all of the products. I recommend a lot that I make a commission from. But I think that's a good sign that someone genuinely wants to help when they recommend a lot of products that they don't make a penny on. The only other thing I might start adding again to my bed experience is a lodestone. And I still have a giant boulder from years ago, probably weighs 30 pounds. And yes, I sleep with a magnetic rock contacting the silver threads on the MitoLife grounding sheet. And yes, it does cause a measurable increase in the voltage. So basically, you're charging up your body more at night if you put lodestones on the silver grid with the MitoLife grounding sheet. And this is a great setup if you're not living in a human factory farm. And my condolences and empathy if you are. The housing system is so strange. And I really think that fuels the online trolling, all of the anger and people wanting to fight and argue. I think a lot of that's caused by the human factory farm. What I mean by this is apartment complexes or houses that are just crammed together where you can see the other neighbor's backyard from your backyard. And there's plenty of room for people to spread out around the planet. There's a lot of uninhabited areas. So in that situation, the setup that I described that I use is one that you'll have to experiment with to see how you feel. Because if you're in 50 Wi-Fi signals, then you might want to buy a Magnetico sleep pad that is way better than a Faraday cage. And I know because I used one right underneath the power line when I was living the RV lifestyle. And I worked three jobs. I finished school. I got a lot accomplished right under a power line. My bed was only maybe 20 feet below. And I had the 10 Gauss Magnetico sleep pad, and it really helped. I do think the Faraday cages are overrated. They're great to travel with. I just really think it's overkill. A lot of the EMF stuff is overkill. My basic strategy wasn't one of the questions, but here we go. And I've talked about this a lot. Vitamin C, otherwise known as ascorbic acid. Vitamin E in the form of mixed tocopherols. Magnesium bound to whatever amino acid you like and whatever form you feel good with. Just don't fall for the marketing that more forms are better because it's not. You want taurine, you want glycine, you want what it's bound to. And when you dilute that with seven different forms of magnesium per serving, you're getting less of what the magnesium is bound to. And that's a real problem with GABA deficiency being rampant and taurine and glycine being these calming amino acids that really affect our mood and brain function and just so many other aspects of our physiology, most people can benefit from a taurine and glycine supplementation. Not only do I take magnesium taurate and magnesium glycinate, but I also take isolated glycine and taurine from the company Lifeblood, which I have on my Matt Blackburn website. I've been saying for years and I always offer affordable options for people because I've been there where it's super shoestring budget for several years. So I know exactly what it's like and I exact, know exactly how to navigate it. And how you navigate it with magnesium is you do everything you possibly can to get the purest water possible. That's the top priority in health to me of investments is a water filter unit. My overall health didn't transform until I invested in a proper water filtration unit that takes out all the acids, natural and unnatural, take out all the contaminants, 
and remineralize it with magnesium. That was where my health transformed. And if you have that base, then you could ozonate it and give it to your animals. You can ozonate it and drink it yourself. And circling back to what I was talking about, you can make your own magnesium for pennies. And it's called magnesium bicarbonate. And that's something that I popularized years ago. So it's called magnesium hydroxide. Crucial 4 sells it. Lifeblood sells it. It's a white powder that you mix with cold carbonated water. You shake it up and you make a liquid form of magnesium. And how you take it is empty stomach. First thing upon waking, don't take it with meals because it will slow down digestion. And do shots throughout the day. And that is a great form of magnesium. Bicarbonate is an incredible ion that has a lot of important functions in the body. It was Russell Beckett that had the patent for this type of magnesium. And he found that it actually extended lifespan in animals 20 plus percent, which is really significant. But everyone will say, you know, this form of magnesium is the best. There's no best form of magnesium. Like I said earlier, take the form that you feel good with. So to recap, talking about EMFs, vitamin C, vitamin E, magnesium, and melatonin are the big four that I would say. And you could also add zinc to the list, and then you could even keep going from there with other nutrients like selenium and iodine. But just to keep it simple, I would really hit those big four, vitamin C, vitamin E, magnesium, and melatonin. And I agree with Robert Selig that everybody should be supplementing zinc. So let's just make it five and say those five nutrients protect your cells from man-made harmful electromagnetic radiation. And they do it in various ways. And what's awesome is all of those nutrients protect from so many other things. They're neuroprotective. They support mitochondrial function. They protect the cells from lipid peroxidation. There's a synergistic effect when you take all five of those consistently. And I've been talking about this quite a bit because I still see Faraday cages. I see these stickers on people's phone. I see EMF blocking silver embedded clothing and all of these other things, which can be potentially helpful, even if it's just placebo or very subtle energies, but there's priorities. And to me, the top priority is taking those five nutrients for EMFs. And then you could start looking into other things like the Magnetico sleep pad or the Blue Shield device. And all of these things work great together and you'll just improve your overall health besides just protecting your cells from EMFs or EMR. Another listener question, what makes your shampoo different from MitoLife? Well, there's no sodium laurel sulfate or synthetic ingredients. If you look at the ingredient list on the website, it's all plant extracts and probiotics. Those are the only ingredients. And also no essential oils to differentiate it from other similar products in the health space. There's a lot of people that are sensitive to essential oils. So they're worried about it affecting their hair color. So there's no turmeric in the MitoLife shampoo or conditioner, nothing that could affect the color of your hair. And it's just very gentle. We've been getting a lot of great feedback on those two products. And I think a lot of people don't know that they exist because I don't talk about them that often. On the MitoLife website, if you click on the living tab, that's where you see the grounding sheet, our fresh roasted small batch coffee, and then the shampoo and conditioners. Listener asks, when will the undercounter water filtration unit be back in stock? It is in stock. I have to repeat this quite a bit, but if you live outside of the US, on the bottom of the website, you'll be able to change the currency and then products will show in stock. 
listener asks, what are supplements to prevent preeclampsia? So for those that aren't aware, preeclampsia is a serious pregnancy complication that causes 76,000 fetal and newborn deaths, which is a pretty big number. And if you search antioxidants preeclampsia prevention, you'll see a lot of research and much of it is conflicting. But this study from 2023 was an updated meta-analysis. And this paragraph stood out to me, said increased antioxidant status is one of the recent targets of therapies aimed at pregnant women with preeclampsia. Despite controversies, antioxidant therapy is a promising alternative to treat different pathologies such as neurodegenerative diseases, cancer, and cardiovascular diseases associated with oxidative stress. Thus, assumingly, since oxidative stress plays an important part in preeclampsia pathophysiology, this treatment may have positive outcomes in patients affected by this disease. Oral antioxidant therapies have been used to prevent and treat preeclampsia, to strengthen the maternal antioxidant defense systems, and to reduce oxidative stress effects on the mother and fetus. I keep my finger on the pulse of the health community and what they're talking about. And for the last couple of years, I've seen a lot of demonization of antioxidants. The most common argument that I see is that excess antioxidants can actually have detrimental effects on the body, which is kind of like saying drinking too much water is not good for you. It's obvious, <laughs> but it doesn't mean you should stop drinking water. And it doesn't mean that a small amount of antioxidants every day is going to have a detrimental effect, especially in a world where we are inundated with stressors, whether it's heavy metals, EMFs, synthetic compounds like fragrances, food dyes, whatever we're exposed to, it causes oxidative stress. And that's why we need exogenous antioxidants, which means supplements, whether it's vitamin A, I like cod liver oil, that has an antioxidant effect, or vitamin E, or vitamin C. Then we also need minerals, namely zinc, which acts as a cofactor for endogenous antioxidants, such as superoxide dismutase. Zinc is a cofactor for that enzyme that scavenges superoxide anions. And in the world that we're in today, you cannot get enough zinc from your food, even if you're on a carnivore diet, to balance out the system. My friend Caitlin runs an iron recovery group for people that have had iron deficiency with or without anemia. And she shares solutions in that group and people exchange notes. And one of the things that she's seen over the years is even eating red meat every day, steaks every day, ground beef, whatever it is, even with the highly absorbable heme iron, for a lot of people, a lot of women, that is not enough to correct their iron deficiency. And again, that is with or without anemia because there's several stages of iron deficiency and anemia is the last and final stage and food is not enough. They actually have to supplement iron and they often supplement heme iron with the supplement that she recommends, which is from a company called Three Arrows. Part of why I am vocal on social media and on my podcast about supplementation is not only do I own a supplement company, but even if I didn't, I would still be vocal about the necessity of proper targeted nutritional supplements because food is not enough and that's shown over and over again in people that are not recovering from chronic conditions using carnivore or ketogenic diets or intermittent fasting, they might see a temporary alleviation of their symptoms, but they come right back when they try to introduce carbs and live a normal life that's balanced. Whenever I get asked about various different health conditions, when I'm doing a live on Instagram or something, there's a lot of what do I take 
for this or what supplement do you recommend for that? And that's why on my Matt Blackburn site, I have the CLF protocol up there, which is my foundation, my starting point for people that focuses on reducing the accumulation and actually removing the current concentration in the body of calcification, lipofuscin, and fibrosis. It's a very gentle protocol. It's not extreme. There is not a lot of contraindications. Of course, this is not a medical protocol, just what I recommend and what I do personally. But we're talking about vitamin and mineral supplementation. And while a lot of the health community focuses in on very specific things like vitamin D, CoQ10, astaxanthin, whatever things that are way down the line, nootropics, I focus on the foundational stuff first. And I've been talking about this for years and years. Magnesium, shilajit, amazing places to start because those two supplements touch so many parts of human physiology. And then you add on to that vitamin K2, which is deficient in most of the population. And that's what not only regulates vitamin D, but also regulates calcium. And that makes sense because all the nutrients in the body are interconnected. And there's the relationship between vitamin D increasing calcium. And you need vitamin K2 and magnesium to balance out that whole process. Magnesium also regulates calcium. And whether I am on an airplane, at an airport, at a car dealership, on the street talking to a cashier, wherever it is, the conversations that I've had the last four years, I've just seen over and over again when I talk about what supplements people are taking. It is not magnesium and shilajit and vitamin K2. It's all this other extra stuff that is way down the list of priorities of things to invest in and supplement. I would also add vitamin E to that list. And I always try to keep it short to not overwhelm people. Systemic enzymes on an empty stomach when you wake up to deal with the scar tissue from all of the inflammation. That's a dissolve it all product that I created. That's a combination of natokinase and seropeptase. But this is all spelled out and detailed the how, the why in my CLF protocol post on the matt-blackburn.com website. To me, that's the starting point and the reason why I went on this long rant, whether it's preeclampsia or diabetes or eye floaters, every condition that arises in the body is an imbalance. And it's an imbalance because there are deficiencies and deficiencies can be caused by toxicities. I've had a lot of shows with HTMA, hair tissue mineral analysis practitioners. That's where you cut your hair, you weigh it, you send it in, they burn it, they see the light emission from your hair, and you could tell where your not only heavy metals are at, but where your essential minerals are at. And from there, you can actually start to strategically supplement. I really like the Oligo scan, and I prefer the Oligo scan more. I just had a show recently with a zeolite guy, Jeff Hoyt, and I also had a show with Jeff Leone, which has been promoting the Oligo scan for many years. And that's a tissue test, the Oligo scan, versus HTMA is an excretion test, just like a fecal test or a urine test. You're looking at what's being eliminated, what the body is letting go of. So I like the Oligo scan because it's looking at what the body has been holding on to for years in the tissue of the hand. And I've been on a protocol since I first interviewed Jeff Hoyt of Zeolite Labs, which is a heavy dose of zeolite. This is absolutely not required to be on long term because it gets expensive but I've been on 30 grams or 30,000 milligrams of zeolite powder every day for months. And I'm watching my vitamins and minerals increase with not changing my supplementation much and my metals going up and down, which we talk about in 
the last show that I had with him. And so I've been integrating that with my CLF protocol, and I feel like it's a really great synergy there. I'm taking high-dose melatonin. I sell 50 milligram capsules of melatonin under my brand MitoLife, and I'm taking four of those every night right before I go to bed. And while people think of melatonin as a sleep aid for jet lag and it's an antioxidant, that is just scratching the surface of what melatonin does. I interviewed Russell Ryder, and while he's very careful to not sensationalize melatonin, he's written books on it. He's the world's expert, essentially, on melatonin, and it does way more than just promote sleep. It's mitochondrial support and improves mitochondrial function, and it's also a heavy metal chelator is not well known. People often go to EDTA, DMPS, DMSA, alpha lipoic acid, all of these really harsh chelators. I like to stay more natural when I can. So I've been on Shilajit resin, which is my panacea product from MitoLife, which contains fulvic acid, which has been shown to not only detangle tau proteins that are involved in Alzheimer's disease progression, but it also helps with snake venoms, which a lot of people have been talking about the last four years with the world events, neutralizes snake venoms, and all sorts of stuff. I mean, Sheila Jeet has so many different applications, and that's why I've been taking it every day for years. And that's been a cornerstone of my supplement routine. And we're talking about foundational things that are really gentle. You don't have to take 200 milligrams of melatonin like I am, but I would just encourage you to take more than three to five, which is the standard melatonin dose. That's often why you feel groggy the next day. It's because you just didn't take enough. It's counterintuitive, but that actually causes the grogginess. When you take enough melatonin, you don't feel groggy the next day. Like I said, it's supporting mitochondrial function and you need enough to do the job. And if it's only a half done job, that's going to contribute to feeling not so good the next morning. So I sell five milligram capsules and I also sell 50 milligram capsules. And if you want to play around with it, you can start with 15, 20 milligrams. You could jump in and just take a 50 milligram capsule before bed. It's just something that you have to experiment with, but that's one of my favorite protections against EMFs. So not only do I take melatonin when I'm home, but especially when I travel, I'll often double the dose and take 400 milligrams or a handful if I feel like I'm starting to come down with something because it's also directly antiviral. That's another one of the effects that people are not aware of, not only with its effect on glutathione and that antiviral aspect, but it's directly antiviral. The molecule itself is. So when somebody comes to me and says, what do you recommend for this, this, and this? My first question should be, are you taking magnesium, shilajit, systemic enzymes, vitamin E, vitamin K2, zinc, and melatonin every day. That's a great start. And then I sell more supplements than that. So digestive enzymes, niacinamide, which is a form of vitamin B3, beef liver, oyster, jellyfish, collagen, elk velvet antler, lithium, uh, something called encephalon, which is a combination of a microalgae extract, phosphatidylserine, and ginkgo biloba, which is brain support and stress support, prevents lipid peroxidation. Those are all add-ons. Some people feel the beef liver and oyster are foundational. That's something that you'll have to experiment with. One of the things that's not very well known about beef liver is that it's essentially a B-complex supplement. It's not going to be as concentrated as isolated B vitamins in a complex like from Lifeblood or Elliot Overton's company, but it's still great, especially if you're consistent with it. 
And I go through phases of sometimes supplementing with the Mitolife beef liver two or three times a day, like with every meal. And that's where I really feel the effects. So there's a vitamin called biotin, which is vitamin B7. And beef liver is a great source of it. Just three ounces of cooked beef liver provides over 100% of the daily value. And we know that the RDAs are horribly low for what the human body requires, especially in modern times with all of the oxidative stress. But that's still a lot of biotin. And I found a study on biotin deficiency in patients with inflammatory bowel disease, IBD. And it talks about how biotin is demonstrably anti-inflammatory. And a biotin deficient diet induces a colitis-like phenotype in mice that's alleviated by biotin supplementation. And if you're like me and you've tried extreme dieting, whether it's intermittent fasting or vegan or vegetarian diets, it's likely that you've had deficiencies for years. I know in my case, I was strict vegetarian and vegan for at least seven years. Then I went back and forth for a while. And then growing up, I didn't like the taste of meat, especially red meat. Something just fell off with it. And it's probably because it was factory farmed. So I know that I've had deficiencies for essentially the first 30 years of my life. And I would definitely put vitamin E in there, K2, retinols, vitamin A, vitamin D, magnesium, B-complex vitamins, zinc for sure, lithium deficiency, melatonin deficiency. I mean, it just goes on and on. And this is why people get such great results with taking pure supplements with a sufficient dose and being consistent with that supplement. They see tremendous improvements in their overall health because you're filling in these gaps that have been there for potentially decades. And when you do that, you can switch on enzyme pathways and tissues that have not been functioning can now do their job. And whether that's an organ or a gland, that creates a massive upward spiral effect of regeneration where your whole body can finally start to not only repair itself, but function properly. This study actually cites various vitamins and minerals as supporting inflammatory bowel disease, including retinol, vitamin K, thiamine, vitamin D deficiency, vitamin B12, and folate deficiency, vitamin B6, zinc deficiency. I think the mistake is people are always looking for the magic bullet, the one supplement to take, or even a multivitamin or a multimineral supplement to take. Shilajit is the closest thing you'll find to a multimineral supplement, and beef liver is the closest thing you'll find to a natural multivitamin. But most people need more than those. Shilajit won't be enough as a multimineral supplement, and beef liver won't be enough as a standalone multivitamin. They actually have to supplement isolated, maybe B1, B3, B5, B6, B12. Again, I'm going off conversations that I've had on airplanes and different places out and about over the years. Everybody is supplementing the wrong things. CoQ10 and fish oil. That's like 1990s supplementation. We've progressed a lot since then in our understanding and of what's important. And that's all the stuff that I've been sharing in this show. So I know at the start, I said I was going to try to not be long-winded with answers. And this was a massive tangent. I think it's an important point that can't be reiterated enough because people tend to forget. And even I fall into it, you know, thinking that one thing is more important than another when the reality is all of it's important, all of the vitamins, all of the minerals. A listener asked, can you sum up the things that you are building? How, what for, how long is it taking, etc. 
just in case you missed it, episode 292, I posted September 20th, why I'm building an underground bunker. It was just under 40 minutes, and I gave the rundown of not only why I'm moving, but why I have been moving over and over again for the last four years. I get messages every week, people saying, I haven't seen your content for years, and now you're popping up on my phone again, finally. So I'm extremely uh, shadow banned or censored on Instagram specifically, but probably on all of the platforms. So that's why I'm sharing that show, because a lot of people are still unaware that I'm moving. And maybe you've been off social media for a while. That's good to do every once in a while, especially if your business doesn't depend on sharing information and constantly being engaged. But to answer that question, it would take an entire show. Uh, Long story short, it's been a lot of delays. Uh, I did get a huge win a couple of days ago where I found out that there is 10 gallons a minute right by where I'm going to put my pretty good size guest cabin, which may or may not be my home through this winter if this company out of Pennsylvania that makes prefab cabins pulls through. Uh, It's been a really frustrating process with their delays, and it's just been a matter of stress reduction. That's what I've been focusing on. So the Apollo Neuro wrist device, I love the recovery program on there. I've been hitting that hard every day on my wrist. And I'm also on the Tromune, at least a square a day, sometimes more, which I found goes perfectly with caffeine, whether that's from espresso shots, like my caffeine consumption every day, generally two espresso shots, and then one can of new brew, which is a kava kratom drink with 30 milligrams of caffeine. And you can find that at my, on my website, the Matt Blackburn site. That drink provides a nice grounded lift. And I find that the Troscription's product called Tromune, which is the cordycepin or cordyceps extract that has the adenosine mimicking effect, that goes perfectly with the new brew. Then lately, I've been getting back into MAP, Master Amino Pattern Amino Acid tablets. The last four months of my life has been so chaotic where it's either skipping a meal or tuna and chips kind of thing. (laughs) And I always eat breakfast every day and never skip breakfast. And I always eat dinner. But in between those, and a lot of people I've been speaking with tend to skip lunch. Once I'm back on grid, I think I'm going to start getting into the chili game because that is the fastest like bachelor easy lunch that's possible. So ground beef and beans and being on grid with the right electric equipment helps a lot. I have friends that do that. So I'll probably start getting into that this winter just to make sure that I'm getting nourishment and I'm getting calories and vitamins and minerals and not just the basic carbs and protein, which I've been focusing on in the middle of the day and it's been working. I'm still getting stuff done and I'm highly productive, but it's not ideal. I think ideally we have at least three meals a day. We're eating consistently and real food instead of relying on master amino pattern tablets and maybe masa chips like I've been doing and even just canned tuna and uh, from safe catch. I've been doing their little packets and cans occasionally on my new mountain because it's just a lot of overseeing. It's a lot of chaos. I have to go there and oversee things, make decisions, make sure that everything's going smoothly. And it's just a small sliver of my life. And so I'm not worried about skipping lunch for the last four months or whatever it's been. I am still focusing on getting sufficient sugar and protein during that time. But long story short, after an eight-month legal battle with a Christian pastor that's been parasiting off me financially for the last four years, I'm moving, not just because of him. There's other reasons that 
added up. I'm excited to have the on-grid capability. I'm excited to have over 100 acres versus 20 acres. And I'm excited to have a bunker more than anything else. So that underground bunker that's 4,500 square feet, I'm extending out to 8,000 square feet. And I might even extend it out further in the coming years. But it actually has a pyramid built into it as well, a giant pyramid room. And so I'm going to put a 18-foot spiral staircase up the middle, a specific symbol with a specific ratio, concrete stamped into the floor, which is giant. I'm going to put a glass floor at the top of the staircase. And then from that point, it's 35 feet up, a 72-degree Nubian pyramid that will be clear, that will allow in ultraviolet light. And it's in that capstone where I will record future shows next year. So I'm very excited to make that my permanent living situation. And down the road, I'm an investor in a company called Geoship. I interviewed the co-founder, Morgan Beershank. It's a ceramic geodesic dome. So they invented a ceramic material that's very similar to bone in its composition. And it's hurricane resistant, fire resistant, mold resistant, bug resistant. It breathes, which a lot of people talk about hempcrete and its benefits. But this material also breathes, which I'm talking about air exchange. And in the show I did with Morgan, he was talking about the energetic properties. So there's the potential for harmonizing EMFs and just the nature of that dome shape has a lot of health benefits energetically. So that's actually going to go on top of the bunker. And they are still looking for investors if you guys are interested. I think investing in companies like this or Aptera, the first solar vehicle ever made, is really the way to go, way more than Bitcoin, which could potentially be a pipe dream. We don't know who created it. So it's geoship.is if you want to get involved and basically put down a deposit to get your own dome. I believe they're building 10 in the next year through 2025, and then I'll be the first one in Idaho to have one. And that's going to go on top of my bunker. So I'll have a spot to hang out during the day in the sunlight, where it's going to be a lot brighter. And at night, I can literally go underground into what's essentially a massive basement. And what I'm really excited about is the concrete and the ceramic. I'm not dealing with wood where over time, carpenter ants and bugs, it can rot. It just breaks down over time. I'm really not a fan of traditional housing. I got a quote to extend my off-grid cabin here, and it was well over a million dollars just to bring it out 50 feet. And that's without adding much on the inside. It was a crazy quote from a local company, and it really woke me up and shifted my perspective to look at alternatives like ceramic domes. I really hope that cabins are a thing of the past and that eventually they get eclipsed by domes and ceramic domes in the future that are far more structurally sound. They make so much more sense in snowy climates like mine, and especially in places that get hurricanes or tornadoes, they're just such a better structure overall, and they're affordable. So the GeoShip that I'm getting, I believe, is in the 200 to 300,000 range, and that's well under the 1 million that I got for my cabin edition, just going 50 feet out. That was totally ridiculous. I've noticed in the natural health community, there's this strong clinging to the past, ancestral living, or using that as the foundation. There's often things that are better. You know, we've evolved out of the teepee and the cave. Now we have a concrete cave. It's called a bunker. Or we have a dome that's like the ultimate teepee. I just notice a lot of fear around advancements and 
changing things. I mean, you see it with the Tesla truck, people, (laughs) middle fingers and thumbs downs and shaking the head and people hate things that are different. That's why I'm actually excited for the Aptera solar car that I'm going to be driving around next year because it's going to really twist people's minds. Wait, it's a three wheeler, two seater. It looks like a spaceship, but you're not plugging it in. You're not charging off of coal which is a total ridiculous anti-EV argument because a lot of the electricity in Idaho doesn't come from coal. It comes from other sources, including natural gas and hydroelectric. But that's besides the point. This car actually potentially never has to plug in if you park it in the sunlight. So I'm really looking forward to melting mines uh, with that technology, which is superior to a gas and diesel car, in my opinion, especially if it's just one or two people that are traveling around. So all that to say, I'm excited to put up solar arrays on the mountain, batteries, inverters, EMP shields, like I have currently on my off-grid property here. And by the way, soft launch on the sale of my off-grid property, it is for sale. If anybody's interested, I have it listed at 1.8 million 20 acres you have a private waterfall you have a huge lake that's around five to six acres basically you could jet ski on it you could fish on it kayak paddleboard whatever you want it's a very set up house i put at least 200k into the victron system with 40 plus solar panels it was actually a gloomy day today and i fully charged up my batteries an off-grid geodesic dome from Growing Spaces. The same one I built on my new mountain, the 40-footer, is here and just an amazing setup. It is the ultimate (laughs) prepping spot. And as far as my neighbor, just like everywhere here that's off-grid, you're not right next to each other like California. So people stay out of your hair if you don't want to be friends with them and A lot of people that I know up here aren't friendly with their neighbors, and that is common. So not to worry (laughs) about him. Uh, You can just do your own thing, and it is isolated. I mean, you can't see any neighbors from the house. So serious inquiries, uh, reach out either to MitoLife or to me on Instagram, and I can show you the house if you're in the area. Like I said, I'm largely moving to have more acreage and to have my own bunker, which is going to be the ultimate grounded sleep and having the pyramid and a dome on top. It's just the perfect setup. And on that new mountain, I will rebuild a lake, maybe not as big, but I will have a huge body of water that I'll put there. Okay, now I'm really going to do (laughs) rapid fire questions. Uh, Thoughts on enemas, and what about doing a methylene blue enema? I haven't looked into that specifically. I have a history of coffee enemas, and it was absolutely beneficial when I first started my health journey. And coming from 20 plus years of being unaware of your body and the screams that it's trying to communicate to you, Coffee enemas are one of the best resets, in my opinion, or you could do colon hydrotherapy, which is equivalent to multiple enemas. The big question, is it necessary to do enemas on an ongoing basis? Every day, every other day, once a week, whatever the frequency. Clark Engelbert and Robert Selig would say the answer is unequivocally yes. Other HTMA practitioners would say no. Um, I'm somewhere in the middle. I really think it depends on the person and the situation. I'm not doing them currently. I did play around with ozonated insufflations, which is like an air or a gas enema, which is half the time. It's so much easier. And my friend Charles at Crucial 4, I had him on the show several years ago talking about ozone therapy and the benefits of ozonides and how you could build up 
ozonides in the body with the rectal insufflation of ozone, which is really close, about 90% or so is effective as intravenous ozone application. And the benefit there is you're building up these ozonides in the system, which have a lot of effects and increase oxygen utilization. I definitely don't think they could hurt, especially once a week. And if someone's exposing their liver to a lot of toxins, maybe their occupation, they're consuming a lot of chemicals or dust and construction or whatever it is, then I think that could be a great tool to keep the liver in good shape. But it should never be the primary thing. Of course, the liver needs other support. It needs vitamin E. It needs vitamin A. It needs basically the fat-soluble vitamins. Taurine, the amino acid, is amazing for the liver. Vitamin K2. There's a lot of things that you should be doing together I mean, not at the same time, but supplementing those daily to get more out of the coffee enema if that's the route that you're going. What do you think about biological age tests and are you planning to take one? Maybe someday. I think a lot of tests are inaccurate. And at this point, as I've said a lot, the Oligo scan is by far my favorite. You can find that at theoligoscan.com. I just question the validity of a lot of lab tests, even blood tests. I think a lot of them could be a waste of money. Thoughts on diatomaceous earth for parasites. I used to take that back in the day. Uh, Funny enough, I actually used to add that to my enemas along with MSM and baking soda and other things. But currently, I'm just taking the Shen Blossom products. So there's the tree resin product called Aka Hinoki, and then the Mountain Detox formula, which is a a tincture of 20 to 30 herbs. It's very bitter. That's my current protocol for parasites. But with the parasite topic, again, (laughs) goes back to covering the foundational stuff and the parasite detox should come later. Like first, get on zeolite or get on a metal detoxing program and worry about the parasites later. Listener asks, how long do you plan on taking zeolite? Uh, So far, indefinitely, I feel amazing on 30 grams a day. And according to the case studies on Jeff's website, it looks to be really safe. When will your new digs be all done and you'll finally be settled? I'm really hoping to get there before the snow. That'll happen if my cabin isn't delayed for a fourth time. And if not, I'll live. I have a roof over my head. Very grateful to live up here. And I'll be in the bunker by next spring. So when the snow melts, that is when I'll be living underground in the bunker. And I'm really excited. And then it'll be another year from then where I'll have the geodesic dome on top. So they're just going to drill a hatch to have a staircase going down into the bunker. Names and ages of your cats. What is their diet? You know, I'm bad with ages, even with my family. I just like to think that everyone's ageless. And I think, you know, whether it's personally or other people, kind of like a spell, almost like a diagnosis to just say, you know, I'm getting older or I'm this many years old. So I'll just say their names. It's Lyra and Lava. So Lyra's a girl. Lava's a boy. Lyra is about twice the age of Lava. She was adopted down in Southern California in actually Big Bear in the mountains. That was my first cabin that I rented. And Lava was actually adopted up here in Northern Idaho. But they're both forest cats. They've both seen all the animals They've seen bald eagles, they've seen foxes, they've probably seen coyotes and deer and elk and moose and all sorts of things. Of course, squirrel, which they have fun chasing around. And their diet, you know, I don't pay too much attention to it. They're not on friskies. They're not on conventional, you know, Petco, PetSmart garbage. 
I give them the wellness brand currently. It's the pouches with gravy, it tends to be duck and chicken. Try to stay away from fish because fish is not ideal for cats. They're very prone to lipofuscinosis and lipofuscin accumulation. My biggest anti-aging strategy for them is number one, deuterium depletion. So they only drink 10 parts per million deuterium depleted water from the company Lightwater. That's drinklightwater.com. That's L-I-T-E water. And if you use the discount code Blackburn, you save a little bit. That's a isotope of hydrogen that has an extra proton and neutron. So it's twice as big, twice as heavy. And basically that clogs up the ATP synthase nanomotor that's responsible for making ATP. And that happens in you, in me, and it happens in Lava and Lyra. It lowers energy production. And supposedly, if you want to get really esoteric, uh, Robert Slovak's talked about contactee experiences with extraterrestrials. And they told humans the reason why we don't live as long as them, like hundreds and hundreds of years, is because we have more deuterium in the water. And if you even go want to go back to like biblical times, like Noah, Methuselah, a lot of these characters that were talked about in these stories, they live to seven, eight, nine hundred years old. I think that was literal. And I think the world used to be different back then. The oxygen was different. The air pressure was different. Obviously, we didn't have <laughs> chemtrails or harmful man-made EMFs as we know them today. And so I really prioritize the water more than anything else, more than the food for myself and for my cats. And that alone, and I ozonate the water, by the way, with the Crucial 4 ozonator. So I have an oxygen tank hooked up to the Crucial 4 cold quartz ozone generator in my bathroom, Airstone, right into the light water bottle, turn my fan on, shut the door, run it for about a half hour or so, pour it in their drinking water fountain, which the best one on the market for cats is called the Elfin, E-L-F-I-N fountain. What makes it the best is that it will last longer than any other fountain. It's the easiest to clean. It's just the best built one. And I actually have on the way, I'm always on the lookout for new cat technology. Uh, there's a company that just released, like the last week or two, the first refrigerated smart pet feeder. So basically, you can feed your cat or your dog wet food, and it'll keep it cold, and it'll dispense it on a schedule. So it's like a refrigerated device. And that website is happylamatech.com. And I ordered two of them to play with because I've been gone a lot and I like to feed my cats wet food as much as possible. Obviously, it's way healthier than kibble. But if you're gone often, you have no choice but to leave kibble for the animals. But I think that's a large part of why cats and dogs get sick. And I've seen it here especially with my neighbor's local cat that he pretty much just neglected and it lived in the garage and literally drank out of the toilet. Uh, he really treats animals horribly. He was on a really horrible diet and obviously drinking toilet water and lived a long time, probably because he was hunting animals when he wasn't locked in the garage. But toilet water, I mean, that's not ideal. If he was on deuterium depleted water, I would imagine he wouldn't have died the way he did, and he would have lived probably another five years. Talking about my neighbor's cat that I watched pass away. We all don't want to see our cats or dogs suffer with health ailments, and I would really start with the water. And obviously, with male cats, they're really prone to getting stones. And so this light water is essentially distilled. And I'm not too worried about Lyra because she's eating a lot of kibble. And I'm sure the mostly distilled water is only benefiting her with helping with that excess uh, mineral load 
from the kibble. And I feed them a brand called I and Love and You, uh, a non fish one. And I use a dispenser so it automatically drops in the little stainless steel tub. And that's basically my whole thing <laughs> with the cats. And they're indoor outdoors. So that's another huge aspect of them living a long time. If you have a cat and it's an indoor cat, that's going to significantly decrease its lifespan. Not only is, you know, it's never eating real food, talking about birds and mice and squirrel, but it's never getting full spectrum sunlight or grounding. So if it's indoor, you definitely, definitely need a catio or some type of an outdoor enclosure that you can let them ideally go in and out whenever they want instead of using a leash like I've seen people do. Obviously, you do your best. There's financials involved, all of that stuff. But I really feel for animals that are locked up in condos and apartments 24-7 for their whole life. Um, I think it's really horrible. It's a lot better if there's a deck that they can go out on, a second-story deck that they can hang out and go in and out. Just that alone will substantially increase their quality of life. But you add in DDW and do the best you can with their food supply, and you shouldn't have to deal with health issues later down the road with your pets. So I'm going to have to make this a short one. It's been really chaotic. Just found out yesterday that my cabin was delayed, so kind of in limbo if I'm even moving this winter. So I'm working on figuring that out. So you guys probably understand, but any episode is better than no episode. Hopefully you got something from this. Matt-Blackburn.com is my website. You can see all of my recommended products, the CLF protocol, like I talked about. You can see the light water on there. If you click the shop tab, the deuterium depleted water. Then my brand is Mitolife. That's M-I-T-O-L-I-F-E dot C-O. And we have a lot of different products on there. And they're really affordable compared to what you would find in the grocery store, especially the supplements that are on surplus sale, which right now are quite a few. So follow me on Instagram. It's Matt Blackburn. I think I'm recently unshadow banned because a lot more people are seeing my stuff now in the last week. So that's really cool. Hopefully I can get this message out to more people now. Mighty Life is on Instagram as well. Check out the YouTube channel to find old episodes. I will see you guys next Friday. Stay supercharged. Mm -hmm.